Hello friends, in this video we are going to see AngularJS module and controllers. Now what is module? Now we, we can think of a module as a different parts of an application like controller, services, filters and directives. Most application has a main method that instantiates and wires together the different parts of the application. Angular apps don't have main method. Modules declaratively specify how and application should be bootstrapped. Now in case of angular we can have a main module and we have a dependent modules so basically the main module is responsible for instantiating the dependent modules now what are the advantages of modular approach to angular js now this approach is easier to understand the syntax is very easy by looking you can identify which is the main module and which is the dependent one one can package code as a reusable components now as you are creating a different module for each feature so each component or each module will be independent of each other and will be a reusable component the module can be loaded in any order as they are not dependent on each other they can be loaded in any order and it also facilitates unit test as these are not dependent on each other so unit testing can be conducted on a particular module as a standalone now what are the best practices for modules now there should be a model for each feature as we have discussed earlier there should be a model for each reusable component especially directive and fake filters and there should be an application level module which depends upon above modules like directives filters and controllers and contains initialization code so basically an an application, an ideal application will have a, a application level module which will be responsible for initializing the other modules which are dependent modules. Now let's move to the controllers. Now in AngularJS a controller is defined by JavaScript constructor function. When a controller is attached to a dome via the ng controller directive, Angular will instantiate a new controller object using the specified controllers constructor function. Now, when you use ng controller directive with a tag, with a div tag suppose, now what Angular does is, Angular calls the constructor of that controller and it creates the object of that controller. While creating that controller's object, a new child scope will be created and made available as injectable parameter to the controller's constructor function as a scope. Now when, you, when, when the controller's object is created, a specific scope is being generated which is specific to that controller and that will be injected as a parameter to the function which will be passed to that controller. So each controller will have its own private scope. Now adding behavior to scope object. In order to react to events or execution computation, in the view we must provide behavior to the scope. So behavior we mean to say is the functions so whenever there's an event being pop up or any execution computation then in that case a function will be created to the scope object which will be called on an event now we add behavior to the scope by attaching methods to the scope object these methods are then available to be called from view or template the best practices for controllers are the controller should not contain only business logic should only contain business logic Putting any presentation logic will significantly affect controller's testability. Now, as a separation of concern, the controller should only contain the business logic. Any logic which is responsible for manipulating UI or a DOM that should be included in view itself. So let's see through the example how we are going to achieve a modular structure and controllers, how we are going to create controllers. So I have a simple application angular angular page basically angular html page wherein left side denotes the output and the right side i have a notepad plus plus wherein i have referred a cdn for angular js and i have a body where i have referred ng app so inside this body if i try to resolve any expression so it will be resolving to four so that shows basically it is supporting the angular js now what we are going to do here is for instance we are going to create the main module and the controller module 
and the same HTML page. Then afterwards, we'll see how we can differentiate it. So let's create a separate script tag. And inside the script tag, we'll have a, have an object of type variable, and will you will be using Angular dot module. The name of my module will be my app, and the second parameter it accepts is the dependencies, which we give in a square brackets. So if there is any dependency, so you can provide that dependency in colons inside the square brackets. If there is nothing, you can provide empty square brackets. Okay, so this is basically denotes the main module, the application module. Now I'm going to add a dependent module to this main module. So in order to do that, I'll use this variable and I'll add controller. The name of my controller is my CTRL and I'll pass a function to this controller and as discussed we'll going to pass a scope variable which will be specific to this controller and then we are going to assign values or we are going to create model properties here so we are going to assign two properties to the scope the first is the name and the name is mesothosal and second property is the location location is Germany so when the angular finds that there is any tag or there is any div or any HTML directive is referring to this controller it creates the object of this controller and it creates two properties as a model and it assigns the predefined values that is a pre-state of a controller and then it will be binded to the view so we are done with creation of the controller as well now we are going to wire it up to the view so this scope is act as a view model basically which will pass the data from controller to the view so in the body tag we are going to create one div element and we are going to decorate this with ng controller and my controller name is my ctrl okay so inside this we can use the scope properties which will which is the model properties so if i say your name and let me include it in a bold tag and we are going to use expression to access them similarly we are going to print location as well okay so if I refresh the page okay it is not giving me anything because we have not assigned module to this ng app now currently we are having a module named my app which is not binded to this HTML page so in order to do that we have to assign the name so what happens this entire HTML page is bounded to this module so whatever the modules inside this module inside this parent module will be used for this HTML page now if I refresh the page you can see the result so this is how you can create a module the, the main module the controller module and then you can bind it to the view okay now in the view it is not necessary to explicitly specify the scope scope variable you can directly write the model properties I mean it is implicitly handled now this is this is how we have included the models in the same HTML file now we'll see one more example wherein we are going to have separate JS files for each model so let's move to the initial stage that is we are binding 1 plus 2 and uh, which will give us 3 so now we are going to have one new JS file and let's add a new file and we are going to save it as app.js and we are going to save it as a javascript.js file 
okay so this js file will be the main module so i'm going to name this as my app and the second parameter is the dependency so the second the dependent module we are going to create is the controller so we can specify the name of that so the dependency name is my app dot controllers okay so this same name we have to resolve in another js file so we'll see how we are going to do that so now our main module is done so we are going to add one more file for the controller one and we are going to save it as controller.js and as javascript file okay and inside this we are going to resolve the module that is a dependent module to the main module this and we don't have to resolve any dependencies for this controller okay so this controller is not dependent on any dependency so we are providing a blank blank square brackets and to this module we are going to add one controller my controller name is my ctrl1 okay and to this controller i am going to pass a function and a scope variable which is specific to this function and then I'm going to assign the scope variable a message and messages from, from CTRL1 hello from CTRL1 okay so what we are doing here is we have created a main module and to this model we are specifying that there is a dependent model you have to call you have to initialize and the name of that dependent module is my app dot controllers and in controller.js basically we are creating a module naming my app dot controllers and here we have defined a controller for a model okay so in the main file what we are going to do we are again going to set this i mean the model name as my app so the my app model will be used as a model for this html page and inside this we are going to create one dev element and we are going to use ng controller okay to specify my controller name and then inside this i'm going to bind the message okay so if i refresh the page it won't work because I have not included the reference of these two files so I have to include the reference of app.js similarly I have to include the reference of controller.js as well okay now if you refresh it you can see the message hello from controller one so similarly I can add one more controller suppose I'm going to name it as my ctrl2 and similarly I'm going to pass a scope variable which will be specific to this controller function okay and I'm going to assign a variable that is message and I'm going to give messages hello from ctrl2 okay and at the html side i'm going to create one more dev and i'll be using controller2 in this case and if i refresh the page you can see two messages has been shown so this is how you can create a main module and then you can create a dependent module and then you can bind both of these things and your view so let's see how you can add a behavior to your scope object so for now uh, we are going to have a text box so we'll using, we'll, we will be using the controller one so let's go to the main thing so let, let this message be uh, the same the in the same state and we are going to have 
of input type text we are going to render a text box okay and here we are giving it a label that that is enter number and we are going to calculate its square okay by calling a method so in order to call a method so let's let's uh, name this method as square and I have to pass the value provided in this input text so in that case I have to create a property in the scope so in order to create the property in the model or a scope I have to use ng model directive and I can say num is the variable and I'm going to pass this variable to this function now I have to create body of this function or I have to define this function in my controller one so in order to do that I can create it on the scope object scope dot square equal to then I'll pass a function and I'm going to accept a value inside this function and I'm going to return value multiplied by value okay so when when you enter something in this text box a square function will be called and a num value will be passed as this is an ng model so that will be present in the model or in the scope and then the square function will be called for this my controller one that is present here and it will return the multiplication of that so let's refresh the thing okay let me add some br tags so that it will look better so now when when I refresh it there is nothing inside it so it is basically giving me not a number so if I add 2 here you can see there is a 4 if I add 20 I will get 400 and if I add 220 it will give me 48400 so it is basically giving me square so this is how you can add behavior to scope object you can create modules you can have a main module and then you can call the dependent modules using dependency injection as here and this is basically a dependency injection so angularjs calls its dependents and initialize them as well and then you can have multiple controllers here and you can work accordingly so so we have seen a basic example of how to create modules and controllers and how to add behavior we'll see more complex examples in our future videos so i hope you like this video thank you